Uh, today we're going to be taking a nerdy, deep, very detailed look at five things uh, that are important to finishing the scissor sweep. Key details. If you like this video format, if you like more, you want more lists like this, more deep dives on techniques, hit the like button, the share button, the subscribe button, whatever button you can find. Leave sure. us a comment. Leave us a comment. They'll be hanging around all sorts of places, I'm sure. All right, let's get it. Number one is going to be your grip choice. Now this is an important question that has a right answer, but you'll have to find it yourself. When we set up for our scissor sweep, we can grab a couple of different places on the collar. I like a cross grip, but a little more traditional would be the same side grip. Either grip I'm getting, I'm getting a firm grip, four fingers in, thumb on the outside. Turning my wrist, this allows me to get a real good grip. So the difference between the two is going to be situational. It's often taught first from this same side collar. Now the benefit to using the same side collar is you have, you have that hand to help you hit the sweep. So when we get into our scissor sweep, we pull up, we can use this to sort of punch and help. So maybe if our sweep isn't as strong as it should be, we can use this to kind of band-aid the situation. The problem I have with it is when we get up on top here, we're in mount, now I've got one sleeve and the wrong collar. Maybe it doesn't bother you. It bothers me. When I get on top, I'd like to have something obvious to work on. So I prefer cross-collar grip about an inch away from their chin, or maybe my pointer finger right by their collarbone. Now this lends itself to attacking these loop chokes and things like that, and we can always slide this up and attack more traditional collar grips. But what this allows me to do after the sweep is I have this cross collar now. So now if I want, I can let go, tighten this grip down, can attack collar attacks, but I also have the sleeve. We want to move in and start attacking the arm lock series. Can't do that with the same side. So I have a clear bias, but try them both out, see which one you prefer. The other grip choice we have to worry about is our knee. When we bring this knee in, we can choose to bring it across the belt line. Some people like that. Some people like it up by the collarbone. For me, again, this is a clear winner, uh, only because when I do this, if they're heavier than me, it tends to put pressure on my hip and I don't like it. When I'm up here, this stays nice and strong. I can hit my sweep. Again, they're both valid, they both work. Try them both, see which one you like better. So number two is going to be our timing and our opponent's posture. When I get set up with whatever grips I prefer, now I'm in scissor guard and I'm ready to attack, I have to make sure my timing's good. If my opponent is up on their toes like this already, this is perfect timing. I can always just crunch forward, lean back, and load. If my opponent goes dead toes on me. She's got the the laces of her, where her shoes would be, flat on the floor, this is going to be really hard for me to load up. It's going to be hard for me to load. But more importantly, if I can't get her coming forward, I'm just kicking him in the knee. That's not helpful. I have to get him to come forward. I have to load them up. So I'm going to do that by utilizing my grips, and I'm going to crunch forward into them. When she decides she's going to push back toward me a little bit, that's when I'm going to come up. She may not even come all the way up to her toes. She may just push forward like this. That's the time. Now I load. So the difference is not getting the sweep if she's not coming forward or getting them loaded up properly. Really, really important that we're using this move, this technique, 
when our opponent is pushing towards us. It's a loading sweep, so we have to get them to load up on top of us. Otherwise, we're just using horsepower to try to BS our way through when really we should have been working on our timing a little bit. Number three is where we put that other leg, the scissor leg. So we have our one knee taken care of, we figured out where we're going to put it. Either here on the belt or up here in the chest. When I'm ready to load, and I load, that's fantastic, now I have to figure out what to do with this other leg. There is only one good answer here. I'm going to drop it almost to the floor, but not quite. I don't want to be lazy here and put my leg all the way on the floor. As soon as my leg touches the floor, she's going to hop right over the top of it. Now I'm in half guard or Z guard, scissor sweep's not an option anymore. She's going to start making her pass happen. So when I go down, I just want to go down to the bottom of her leg, to where her knee is. I don't want to put it all the way on the floor. As long as my leg is a little bit off the floor, step over my leg, <laughs> she can't because it's on top of her knee, not below. Here, she's going to pick my leg up with it. So when we load, we drop just to here. Don't make the mistake of putting that knee all the way on the floor. Number four is making sure we have the entire sweep. This sweep ends with us in mount not with us neutral side by side. I'll show you what I mean. If I let disconnection happen between the two of us during the sweep, like I'm trying to throw them as far as I can, there's this disconnection that happens and I can't get up on top now. And what's worse, if she's smart, she's gonna come back in and she's gonna start attacking my legs and stuff. If you wanna see a really cool video done by some really cool people about how that works, check that out in the corner there. To solve this problem, I have to stay tight. I use, if she's loaded up properly, I use just enough force to sweep her over and I'm up on this elbow. Now, instead of leaving my leg hang out here, I straighten it. So it shoots down the leg. One more time, that one goes by a little quick. I get up with them. I don't let space happen between the two of them. Practice it a couple of times, you'll get it right in no time. Number five, this is the big one. This is the big important one framework. My frames have got to be on point if I'm going to be using this technique. I have to have strong frames with my knee, my elbow, my other hand, my elbow touching the ground. Everything has got to be really, really structured. I'll show you what I mean. Once I grab my grips and I get out, I'm in a new guard now. This is shield guard or scissor guard whatever you want to call it in your account. This guard serves a lot of purposes. It's not just the scissor sweep. But everything has got to be strong. I'm pushing out with my knee, pulling in with my grip, making sure this is tied tight. I want there to be pressure between the two of us. I want there to be tension. My right foot here on the outside is hooking on the hip, creating another point of framework so she can't just run across me behind me. If my toes are lazy here, she can grab them, bend them toward my butt, and she can start passing this way. So I hook them right around her hip. It's going to be very, very difficult for her to get a hold of it, especially while I'm trying to sweep her. When I come up on this elbow, I'm making another frame between the ground and her. So now when I load, this frame stays. The distance between my knee and my hip doesn't change. Here. 
If I'm lazy when I pick her up for the sweep or my structure fails, no sweep. And I'm probably going to get passed. So when I go, this arm locks to my knee. The knee locks to her shoulder. This elbow locks to the ground. Everything's sort of locked in place. If she tries to get up and run around, I should stick to her like glue. Just shit. This stays. Here we go. That was five key details about the scissor speed. If you really enjoyed this, hit the like button. If you want to see more, hit the subscribe button.